Hey people, I'm back. We're talking about faith. We're talking about being able to recognize and to know the real faith that God will want for us to have in comparison to some of the other stuff that we told exists. Faith is, is, as we said yesterday, is the ability to see life through spiritual eyes and to open our spiritual eyes and to see that there is a God who is with us at all times and a God who since Pentecost is now in us. And that's a, a great starting point for us to build our faith upon. But we have to have spiritual eyes to see all that, all that beauty of what that is. I want to suggest to you today that there are two enemies of faith. One of them is feelings, and the other one, funnily enough, is facts. Listen to me as I share this thought with you. First of all, let's talk about feelings. I'm going to tell you people, feelings are fickle, eh? Hey? You can't live your life according to feelings, and when you do, you become the most nebulous person ever, drifted by every woman fancy according to how you feel. I gotta tell you, when I get up in the morning, I don't always feel spiritual. You know, I love preparing sermons, and my, my Saturday is, is filled with just sermon preparation. I sit quietly and I do my stuff. And when I go to bed late on a Saturday night, I'm feeling, yes, man, this is so cool. I've learned something. I've connected with God. And I can't wait to get together with the people on Sunday morning. Hey, I don't want to disappoint you. But when I get up Sunday morning, sometimes I'm thinking, do I have to do this? You know, and I feel so unspiritual because my whole thing is based upon feelings. And feelings are fickle and feelings get you into a lot of trouble. And so feelings need to be, need to be dealt with. Um, I think sometimes when we, we delve upon feelings, I, I think of that great example of that of that man back in I think it was the 1800s when there was this great revival taking place and he was one of the leaders in this revival and if you read his story he talks about going to a prayer meeting as his prayer meeting was incredible he said the presence of God would have appeared to be so great he sort of sounded like there were angels singing it was incredible and the feelings and the emotions was so high and he thought man this is if this is what prayer is then man i'm in the feelings are just so cool well the next day he went to the prayer meeting and there were no feelings there was no angel singing there was just a bunch of people talking to god next day he went back and thought maybe the feelings will come today ah the feelings didn't come and at the end of a period of time he began to realize that maybe satan had caused those feelings because Satan wanted there to be a connection between feelings and his faith. And there very seldom is. And if you have to feel like you have faith, then there are times that your faith is not going to be what it needs to be. Because faith does not need feelings in order to operate. The second thing that is sometimes a challenge to our faith are the facts. People can be true, you don't know the facts. The facts are this, there's no money in the bank. The facts are this, that the, you know, all that, all that stuff. And I've got to tell you, God's not impressed with your facts because God has a way of having the final say, despite the, the nebulousness of your feelings and despite the facts that you think are leading you to the end of the road. I love the thought sometimes I, I think of the treasurers in our church. Uh, the, these guys have to pay the bills. And they say, hey, Trevor, we've got no money. And to the pastor, hey, we've got no money. Or to the elders, we've got no money. And the elders are saying, is that a fact? And they say, yep, that's a fact. And they will smile and say, well, suck it up because God is going to provide. And they say, is God really going to provide? Look at the facts. We've got this. We've got this bill to pay. And, and God comes through. I don't know. I wish I understood how it worked. And then I could try and explain. But I don't understand. And I certainly can't explain it. But when God comes through, not based upon how you're feeling or by you presenting the facts, Lord, we have no money, Lord, we're in trouble, Lord, we're this. God not concerned about the facts, people. God is concerned about your faith despite the facts. And that poor treasurer has to be the most spiritual man in your entire team because he's got to be the believer. He's got to see after he has believed. And when he believes and then he sees, his faith will be, will be so much stronger. So good luck to the, the treasurers of the churches and of organizations out there. I just think of some of the things that have happened in Genesis, which is our, our community outreach program from the Norwegian Settlers Church. It's a phenomenal project. And people often say, well, where did all this come from and how did this happen? 
And I'm amazed, and I've often spoken about the friends and the partners, but at the end of the day, God provides for that which He purposes. It's amazing. I don't know how it works, and you're never going to be able to explain it. But it's there as we draw upon the resource of God. So feelings are, are fickle. Don't trust them. Facts, God's never impressed with you sharing the facts with Him. In fact, have a look at some of the stories that you read in the Scriptures. Have a look at the death stories. There's Lazarus in the grave, and, and the, Jesus comes down to the grave, and He says, roll the stones away. And, and the people say, Jesus, He's dead. Jesus, you obviously don't know the fact that, that He died. He's been dead for four days. And Jesus says, just roll the stone away. Your facts don't impress me. Don't you know I'm bigger than your facts? Then you have Jairus walking with Jesus back to his house. And his young girl, is his daughter, has just died. And the people come out and they say, Jairus, here's the facts. Your daughter has died. Leave the teacher alone. And Jesus says to Jairus, Jairus, don't listen to him. Jairus, don't listen to the facts. Jairus, take no notice of the facts. God is bigger than the facts. And then ultimately, Jesus' own death and everybody would have pointed to a Jesus hanging on a cross who had a spear stuck in his side and a, and a Jesus who they took down and they wrapped up and he was dead. He was dead, dead, dead. They put him in a tomb. They rolled a stone in front of the tomb and they walked away saying the fact is that our Messiah is now dead. Ah, oh, God wasn't impressed with that fact. God said, watch this. Never mind your facts. In three days, your facts will mean nothing. And three days later, they stood and looked into an empty tomb. I really hope that this will encourage you people that no matter what your facts are, God is bigger than your facts. And as your faith grows, I know you're going to see that. Don't let your faith be hinged or hold onto the fickleness of feelings. Feelings come and feelings go. They're nice when they are there, but don't expect them all the time. And let your faith grow, not because of the facts that you think you know. Hold on to the facts that you know about God. That's true. But the facts of this life mean nothing in the hands and in the presence of a God who's almighty and all-powerful. Go and have a good day.